Yo, what's good everybody? Welcome back to another video. So I've been getting a ton of different requests to do breakdowns again because I don't know, like I said, I'm trying to mix it up on the YouTube channel. I don't want to really want to do just all breakdowns, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to mix up doing vlogs and stuff like that. I haven't done a breakdown in quite some time, so I'm going to do a breakdown for you guys. I'm going to break down last night's trade. So anyways, what I'm going to do is pretty much just grab the camera show you guys last night's trade, last night's results. So I made about $40,000 profit on gold, which I did get stopped out. Uh, my trailing stop loss did get hit. I was up a total of $70,000 in equity, but regardless of the fact, still $40,000 in trading day, which is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, making 40 grand in a day is a lot of money. Let me now show you guys pretty much the profits and everything else. All right, everybody. So as you guys can see, the broker that I'm currently trading on is Athens Markets. If you guys are interested in actually trading on the same broker that I trade on, where I have a big portion of my trading capital, the link will be in the description. But other than that, here's pretty much the profit for the week so far. So here is my gold position where I made $40,000. And then these are two trades that I took on GJ, not huge trades, but those are two trades that I took on GJ. And this is a $30,000 withdrawal that I actually had uh, done for last week, which I did hit my crypto wallet already. But as you guys can see, this is not a screenshot either. My account overall for the last three months is up $650,000 in profit. And then this is the profit that I made on the gold position, which I did get stopped out early because I was up a total of $70,000 in floating profit. But that is pretty much the profit that I have for this week so far. So for the week so far, it's like a $55,000 profit for the week, which is absolutely amazing. Um, the markets have been doing very well, but these two trades, for some reason, pretty much all these trades, my trailing stop loss got hit for all of them. Now onto the breakdown portion of this video. When it came to me and my decision making as to why I actually wanted to look to take this short position on gold, one thing that I like to base my trading methodology off of is all based off of supply demand, support and resistance. So gold over the last few weeks has been trending very bearish. You could see that very clear on this four hour time frame where price pretty much forms a lower high, then a lower low, then a lower high, then a lower low, then a lower high. And as you guys can see, this is very clear indication of price trending bearish when price is forming lower lows and lower highs. And again, this is going to be considered a lower high because this high is lower than the previous high. And then it is a confirmed lower high because this high broke under the previous lower low, making this the valid lower high point. So this is all just basic trending fundamentals when it comes down to reading price action, right? So when it came down to me making this decision on looking at what position I wanted to take on gold, gold was actually trading around this area, around 1800. It pretty much had broken down into this area. And before I even looked at taking a position, I have to identify overall market direction. Looking at the weekly time frame, we had a lot of bearish momentum just to kind of make things short, simple, sweet to the point. Daily time frame, price started to continue to make new lows and break under my areas of support. So as you guys can see, 1865 is a major area of resistance that I have marked off here as support along with 1833 it is a major area of resistance where I had marked off where there is previous support. So these are all areas that prices continue to break under. And for those of you guys looking to mark off your support resistance with a little bit more accuracy or your supply and demand levels with a little bit more accuracy, you want to look for the biggest reactions out of those levels. So notice how once price hit this area, it traveled from 1833, literally all all the way down into 1600 so i would say it's a pretty big reaction along with look how many times price failed to break above that area then we look at 1865 look at what happened when price rejected 1865 went all the way back down to support at 1764 so these are all tall tale signs if that's how you want to call it that you know these are more important areas of supporting resistance because you can have your minor areas such as this one right here right, or this one right here right but these are your more major areas and you can mark off your major area of support and resistance based off the daily time frame. So why we take trades at supporting resistance levels is because these are areas of liquidity. These are areas where you're going to have buying and selling pressure. And these are areas where you're going to find the highest probability setups. So when it came to me making this decision, I saw price break under support multiple times along with price trending bearish. Again, we're identifying direction. We're identifying that price is making lower lows along with breaking support uh, support levels. So. When price actually broke under and made new lows at about 1786, at that point in time, I only want to take a trade ever on a support or resistance level, right? Look how, how many times price rejected this 1833 level. So what I waited for was for price to give me a pullback into that 1833 level to then look to go short. Now, some people may be asking why 1833? 
because now that price has broken under 1833 notice that there was previous support which had now formed as resistance after price kind of broke under this area right there is a higher probability that price is going to pull back to test that area and buyers are going to try pushing price higher from that point right you want to think about everything as a tug of war overall though again we only want to be buying and selling at levels of support and levels of resistance so where's my nearest level of support where's my nearest level of major resistance it's 1833 so i'm not interested in taking any trade unless price is going to pull back into 1833 give me that rejection to look to go short why very simple because i only want to focus on the highest quality trades possible the highest probability trades possible right if you were looking to buy a car right would you go into any kind of car market and put your hard-earned money behind the car that you know is most likely going to break down on you probably not and that's the same exact kind of decision making that i follow here why would i take a trade and put my hard-earned money behind a trade that may not play out in my favor so we want to focus on higher quality setups along with higher probability setups meaning that the trade has a high probability to play out in our favor so now when price actually did pull back to 1833 you can see that there is an area of previous market structure here which is this is our previous four hour lower low point which again at one point in time there's buying pressure here that buying pressure was met with selling pressure right now once price actually pulled back this was my entry method now just so you guys can kind of make that decision right um, so right once price actually pulled back into 1833, I saw that price actually rejected and closed under. Not a major rejection, but enough for me to want to take the position because price did close under. So I ended up taking the position very aggressively after that four hour candlestick actually closed. And it's not always trades like this where I get a crazy entry with zero drawdown. Now, before I entered the trade, I already knew where I wanted to get out if I was right. And I already knew where I wanted to get out if I was wrong. The decision making behind that was my stop loss is going to be up here roughly for around 90 pips, which is quite a lot, right? I want to say it was a little bit less. It was like 80 some pips because I was looking to gain four times my risk out of this trade, right? If price were to break above this resistance area and hit my stop loss, I'm most likely wrong anyways, and I want to get out of the trade. You want to place your stop loss in an area that's going to make the trade invalid. And if price were to come all the way up to 1840, then most likely my trade was invalid and I'm going to lose money if I, and I'm going to lose more money if I continue to hold my position. Remember, one thing about trading is that the risk and how much you're going to lose is predetermined, but the war, reward is always going to be unpredictable. And especially in this example, this is why I want to trade or break down this trade for you guys, because this trade just didn't play out how I expected it to play out. But at the end of the day, still in the green right so this entire area is that previous area of support and resistance i was looking to take that sell from so right once price gave me that rejection that's when i ended up taking the short position very simple entry method a very aggressive entry method i knew that price on the next candlestick could have possibly gone up for another retest but that was the risk i was willing to take because again i saw this was a very high probability setup now my take profit for this area was actually going to be 1800 notice how at one point in time price rejected 1800 price flew up from 1800 to 1850 and then dropped all the way down to 1786 but notice how price closed right at 1800 so this is where i decided to actually put my target because there's a reason price closed at 1800 although it went all the way down to 1786 so that is where my target was i identified that i had a potential to make four times on whatever my stop loss size is whatever i'm risking and that's when i actually made a decision to make the entry right when this candlestick actually closed pretty much a little bit before new york session a few hours before now i knew that i was going to see real volume into new york session but luckily price was pushed in my favor pretty much right away now when it came to this hour time frame and why i decided to actually take that position or, or trail my stop loss in the hours pretty much i saw price come all the way down to here now it's already up almost three times my risk and it could have closed with a seventy thousand dollar profit but i decided to trail my stop loss because what could have been a seventy thousand dollar profit could have potentially turned into a hundred thousand dollar profit so that was a risk i was willing to take what i also noticed on why i trailed my stop loss to where i did which i'll go over in a second was that there is a level of previous resistance here notice how price pumped up or pumped down came back up retested rejected came back up retested rejected continued to go down now that price had broken under that area yet again and i saw price form kind of this little lower high point under the 50 sma 
price continued to go down and at that point i decided okay well if price breaks above this area then it has a probability of continuing to go up possibly back to my entry and i'm not willing to give all my profits back to the market which you have to be able to do that as well you need to know when to get out and when it's smart for you to show your stop losses versus for you to continue to hold your position right that's all part of the learning curve when it comes down to trading so this is where i decided to actually throw my stop loss to pretty much price went down in my favor um continued right here this is where price continued to go down my favor sorry about that right but then price came all the way back up took me out at my trailing stop loss and i made a pretty much forty thousand dollar profit anyway so i hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown now for those of you guys interested uh in, in kind of learning from me more i'm gonna post more like life content here on my youtube channel so you guys can go follow my uh, free telegram which i do have the link in the bio along with the broker that i'm actually trading on where this is pretty much where i have a big chunk of my trading capital because i trade on multiple different brokerages but this broker is the main broker so that link will be down in the description as well and anyways i'll talk to you guys in the next video peace out everybody bet